Business Connections Live, the UK's leading online business channel. Connections Live with Steve Highland. Hello and welcome to Business Connections Live, the programme for entrepreneurs, SMEs and also business owners. Now on today's show, how to make sales work with Antonio Falco, a sales professional with years of expertise on how businesses can open the door to untapped sales. Antonio, it's lovely to have you with us today on the show. Hello, Steve. Thank you very much for having me back. Thank well, it's, gr it's great to have you back on the show because, I mean, over the years that we've known you and you have been on previous editions of Business Connections Live, the nice thing is that you are one of those true sales professionals out there. And not only do you do the talk, but you truly do the walk as well, don't you? I think that's, uh, that's critical to credibility. Now, for those people that don't know Antonio Falco, it's an interesting name for a start. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. It's my real name, by the way. <laughs> um, well, I, as you said, I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm a business uh, uh, consultant. I specialise in sales and business development, and I work with a variety of businesses. Have done for the past, gosh, now 17 years now since I got out of corporate sales, and um, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of hard work, but it's uh, sales is so critical to any business. You know, uh, I, I've said this in a number of different talks that I've done, and you've heard me do a number of, of talks, it's the lifeblood of the business and without it you have no business. Indeed. Do you think the landscape when it comes to sales has changed over the last, in that period, over that last 20 years? If we look back, was sales conducted in a different way to, to the way it is conducted today? That's a very good question. Um, I think what's changed is the uh, different avenues there are now, as I call them, loud hailers to get your message out there. So your initial marketing before you actually get into that sales scenario with a potential customer. Uh, that's changed. I mean, in, in, in my day, there used to be uh, some sort of database, yellow pages and a, and a telephone. Now you've got a variety of different, as I've said, loud hailers that allow you to get your message out initially to potential customers. So some people like Twitter, some people like Facebook, some people like LinkedIn. Uh, there's, there's just a variety of ways of getting your initial message out there. But in fundamentally, when you're in front of a potential customer, I don't think that uh, the skills that you needed 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, have changed in terms of the ability to understand what you're, you're doing there. And as I've said on many occasions, and you've heard me say this before, sales is about the exchange of your product or service for their money. And it's how you make that exchange. And that's why I keep saying sales is both a science and an art. And so that's, I don't think, fundamentally changed. You still need to understand how to make that exchange. Do you think a lot of today's salespeople are going out there and they are unprepared, not only for the process of conducting sales, mm. but also that they're unprepared for the knockbacks that they're gonna get? They, they sometimes feel, and we, we live in this, in this world where everything happens very, very quickly, but do you feel when people go out there, they don't realize just how much knockbacks they're going to get when mm. they are doing sales? Uh, I think that's probably a very fair comment. I think that salespeople are probably unprepared. In my day, Steve, I learnt with a couple of very good companies, some in a classroom format, mainly out on the road. I had some fantastic teachers. I'm not sure that happens anymore. I think that a lot of companies uh, are still in the mode of thinking that, um, provided that somebody can, inverted commas, talk the talk, or have the gift of the gab. And by the way, Steve, for the past 25 years, I've not discovered what the gab is, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, that, that, um, that they are the skills required uh, to be a salesperson. They're not. Selling is an art and a science. And what salespeople need to understand is you need to take it as seriously as any other profession. There's hundreds of sales books. I work with companies that insisted that we read some of them, as well as being taught on the job. That doesn't, I think, happen as much as it perhaps should do. Consequently, you know, salespeople maybe get the wrong reputation. They go out unprepared. They don't know what they're doing in front of people. They don't know how to handle a sales meeting. They don't understand the structure. They don't understand what questions to ask. That actually you should ask any questions. And that's why my new book, Stop Pitching and Start Selling, 
it should be a revelation to a number of people. Well, we're going to talk about that a little sure. bit a little bit later on. Uh, when it when it comes to actually putting putting that together and looking at those those initial skills that mm -hmm. you need, do you think a lot of people are actually going out there and nothing more than order collectors? I think there are certain um, situations where people are working for companies where that's that's exactly what it is. You know, the, 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 all the all the marketing and branding has been done for them, and they are essentially uh, collecting orders. But for the majority of companies, smaller business, medium-sized businesses, where they need salespeople to actually, from the very start, and I remember reading just just last year on a, on a website that uh, an American website, uh, interestingly, that a salesperson's value is their ability to create something from nothing. So you have nothing more than the product or service that you have to offer. Now, who, who on earth are you going to try and sell that to? How are you going to find that potential customer? And when you find them, what on earth do you do with them when you, when, when you begin to engage with them? So the, the skills of calling people, understanding why you're making that call, making an appointment, sitting in front of them, and understanding the process of getting from, Steve, very nice to meet you, to thank you for your order, their skills, I think, we need to understand uh, and, and need to be kept alive. Well, well, we'll be talking about the key skills that a salesman needs to have in a few moments' time. It's interesting, you touched on the fact that you read an article that was written in America just mm. a moment or so ago. Do you think the Americans have a different approach when it comes to the professionalism of a salesperson than we have here in the UK? You go into a supermarket or into a store, everybody is anything but a salesman. They are sales advisors, sales assistants, sales representatives. Nobody wants to be a salesman. Yet in America, it is seen as being a profession. A profession. Mm. Do, do you think we get that wrong? Uh, I, I, for sure. I think that we need to stop worrying about the fact that we are salespeople. It's OK to be a salesperson. Actually, if you do it right, it's a fantastic job. Actually, if you do it right, you're a great value to your company. You're a great value to the industry. Um, America has always taken a view that selling is a profession, as you've said. It is a serious job. It isn't something you fall into by accident, as many salespeople do. You know, it's almost like the last resort. I can't do X, I can't do Y, I'll try and do selling. Um, we do hear that, <laughs> not they, that salesmen do end up falling into it, don't they? Yeah. So I think America's view has always been, has been for, 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 for a number of decades, uh, that it is, it is a profession, it's something you take seriously, it's something that requires engagement by you as the salesperson. It does require you to study the art, not just wing your way through it. You can only do that properly when you know it. It's a bit like watching um, a sport, snooker. You know, you watch the art of billiard playing or snooker and you think, wow, that was easy, I could have done that. What they don't show you is the hours and years of practice beforehand, before they get to that. This is the, the, the overnight success that took 20 years. There you go. It's yeah, exactly that, absolutely. isn't it? It's, 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 the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the Dali School of, of Art. You know, I remember he did a, an interview uh, a, a number of years ago, you probably find it on the web, where the interviewer said to him, well, could you draw me something now? And he said, well, give me a piece of paper and a pen, and he squiggled three or four lines. And the interviewer said to him, well, what's that worth? And he gave him some horrendous figure. And the interviewer said, well, how on earth is that worth that sort of money? You, it took you 30 seconds to do it. He said, no, it took me 25 years to do it. Yes. And that's the skill. So, America takes selling as a profession. Are they as good at it as we are? Well, that's debatable. We're still very good at it here. We just need to take it seriously. So we are good at it, which is the main thing. If you had to paint a broad brush, so not the detail, but a broad brush on the next question, what do you think the biggest mistake is that we make when we go out there? Uh, several. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, just, just give us a, 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 bit, um, a bit of a summary. Uh, being unprepared, not really knowing your product or service, because without knowing that, you don't know what to ask. You don't know what it is you need to find out that allows you to then show somebody a solution. Because what is selling? Selling is the art of finding out what the problem is and then showing them a solution. So it's the unpreparedness. It's the inability to take the role of selling as a serious job. And what do you think the thing is that we, we, most of us don't do? If, you, if we watch no more of the programme, what is the one thing that most salesmen don't do particularly well? Is it that final bit where they go, look, do you want this or don't you? Give us the order. Do they, just not, do they not go for the close? 
Uh, that's one. That, that's uh, that. That is one <laughs> key element of it. Um, do you know what I, I remember, Steve, uh, uh, being at a, a networking function years and years ago, and uh, I, I got a question asked. It was around a roundtable discussion, and I got somebody asked me a question. He said to me, "Look, I've been seeing a particular customer now for the past six months. He loves everything I do, loves the solution I, I presented, but he never gives me the order." I said to him, "Look." do this give him a call set up a meeting and then when you get in front of him this is exactly what i want you to say and that is this steve we've been talking now for six months you like me you like my product can i please have your order <laughs> now the anticipation was that the following month we all got back together everybody was desperate to know what what had happened and he said to me no i did exactly what you told me and the guy looked at me for a second which of course in, in that situation is a lifetime and he said to me you know what I guess I have been messing you about here's the order so yes you have to ask at the end of the day for the order and you know you can be as sophisticated as you like in the sales process and the really clever salespeople make it look easy but at the end of the day you, then you still have to say can we have your order and there's two reasons for asking that or three reasons one because you can identify whether or not you're wasting your time and theirs and a very important rule in sales is this. What salespeople need to appreciate, and if you're running a business, you are that salesperson as well, is the equal value of the only two answers that somebody can possibly give you. And that is yes or no. If the answer is yes, fantastic, you got the order, take it, thank you, I'm out the door. If the answer is no, Steve, great. Stop wasting your time in theirs and get out and find somebody else. Both those answers, Steve, have equal value. And that's something that salespeople just don't understand. You're never going to make all the sales. You're only going to make the ones that you intelligently find and understand. So that's one thing. And the other thing I would say is that um, y y you have to have the tenacity to keep going. They keep saying sales is a numbers game, and to an extent it is. You know what, Steve, I keep saying, if you give a dog a note, he'll actually make a sale. The trouble is he might have to see a million people before he makes the sale. So the difference between us and a dog is that we can speak, and all, all we're doing is the, the better we get at taking our profession of selling seriously, the better we understand the process, the better we understand what it is we're trying to solve. And of course, as I've said, selling is solving a problem, showing a solution. The better we get at doing that, what we're doing is increasing our odds of making the sale. And that's the, that's the difference. Listen, we'll come back and we'll talk more about the, uh, the key skills you have. I mean, if you are in sales at the moment, I'm sure you're already finding this absolutely fascinating. We've got more from Antonio Falco in just a moment right here on this edition of Business Connections Live. But before we go any further, I'll tell you what we should do. Let's look back at what happened on last week's edition of Business Connection. We had a great guest in. Not that I'm saying that you're not a great guest, by the way. Uh, we had the fantastic uh, Nikki Creel. She was in. Social media expert whose goal is to inspire, teach and empower business owners to use social media strategically to grow their business through building awareness, attracting more customers and also increasing sales, which is really what this is all about. If you're in business, you've got to be increasing sales. You've got to be making sales. Antonio is going to tell us how you go about closing that deal but how do you attract your customers using social media well do check out the entire show with Nikki Creel in but to give you a bit of a taster here's what happened on last week's edition of Business Connections Live Now, on our show today, our guest is a fantastic lady. She's been on previous shows. If you've had the opportunity to catch up with them, it's Nikki Creel, a social media expert whose goal is to inspire, teach, empower business owners to use social media strategically to grow their business through building awareness, attracting more customers, and also increasing sales. Well, I think the thing is that to remember it's business is really about human relationships. And um, when people go onto social media, they quite often think that is a broadcasting tool and they'll just put it out and sort of put out messages as though it's advertising. And as, as social media works best when you're building relationships with people. I think the thing is to remember it's a two-way conversation. So a lot of people don't listen on social media. So they're not actually paying attention to opportunities that might come their way. Um, so they're missing out because they're just putting out their news all the time. But also by asking questions on social media that people, people are programmed to want to answer questions. 
So when, uh, when somebody asks you a question, you want to answer it, and then it's a great way to get customer feedback and see how, th how things lie by asking those questions. It's, it's not that you're going to do all your selling directly on social media. Yes, some sales will, will happen on social media, but it, you're going to start a relationship on social media for most people. It depends on what business you're in. But if you're selling a service, you're going to start it on social media, but you will take it offline at some point. And the, often the closing of the sale will be offline. I think people want to feel as though they know you um, because people do business with people who they like, know and trust. It's Dale Carnegie all over. Mm -hmm. His book is as relevant as it e ever has been. It's been, you know, it's amazing reading something that somebody wrote so long ago and it's, it's so relevant. Um, I think some people share too much, but it's like, it's, it doesn't matter what some uh, other people do because there are people who overshare almost everything. I think the thing is you've got to think of yourself as a business and how you can put your best foot forward. I, a lot of people just use social media to broadcast and they forget that people are having conversations all the time and are actually asking for products and their services if they actually listen to the conversation. Content is, is, is stuff you put out there, okay? Um, it doesn't always have to be your own content. Um, and I think you can save a lot of time by curating other people's content. Hi, I'm Nikki Creel. I'm a social media coach, trainer, and author of How to Twitter for Business Success. I inspire businesses to actually start using social media more strategically because quite often businesses will start on social media, have an account, and not know what they're doing uh, with it. I think it's very important to have your business objective uh, firmly in place, know who your customers are, um, and go in with a, a, a different objective, a business, with your business hat on when you're using social media. Um, and in terms of what we were talking about today, with social selling, that social selling is, is not necessarily selling directly on social media. It's using social media as a way to get a 360 degree understanding of who your customers are. So when you talk to people face to face, you have an inkling of what they're about and you can actually find out all the background information about them. So that it's not a cold call um, and that people are coming to you or you're attracting the right people because of what you put on your profiles. Um, because obviously if somebody comes to you, that's the best and the easiest way to do business. Um, and I personally don't like going out and selling. I don't think of myself as a salesperson, but I like it when people come to me and um, ask me to do business with them. And ideally, that's what I want for, for the businesses that I work with, because I think social media can definitely help um, almost all so, uh, small businesses to level the playing field and be able to compete without spending a fortune. The fabulous Nikki Creel there, and a fantastic show. If you do get an opportunity, do watch last week's edition of a Business Connections Live. If you want to visit Nikki's website, uh, you'll find it here. I'll just check out what the address for you is. It is nikkicreel.com. Uh, and if you go on there, you'll find a whole range of different uh, pieces of information about her social media training. She's got a book as well that's out there at the moment. She's writing another one too. It is a fascinating site. If you get an opportunity, uh, do go along, and it'll give you a real introduction in the how to use social media for your business. That's uh, Nikki Creel and once again do watch last week's programme. It was absolutely fantastic. And uh, With us today we've got Antonio Falco. Antonio, uh, just before we were talking about the key skills of selling, before we get on to that, let's just talk about some of the things that you're involved with because outside of what you do for a living, you can do a, quite a lot of voluntary stuff as well, don't you? Absolutely. But you do a lot for the FSB. For yes. uh, So just for people that I don't know what FSB is, just tell us. Uh, the FSB is the uh, Federation of Small Businesses. It's the largest uh, lobbying body in Europe, uh, representing small businesses and the issues that they are uh, having to tackle on a day-to-day -day basis. And we represent uh, businesses both at local level and at national level. So over the past couple of years, both the autumn statements and the budgets have contained uh, elements in there which have been driven by the FSB. So we are at the very heart of government when it comes to representing small businesses and the issues that they uh, encounter on a daily basis when they're trying to do run and, and, and do business. Because it's interesting, people like the CBI, you work closely with them as well, don't you, the CBI we do and, and the other large organisations. Sure. 
Sheffield. But our, our focus is on, is on small businesses. And I, as you quite like to say, I'm, I'm the regional chairman for Surrey and West Sussex and uh, have been for the past couple of years. So we have uh, just under 10,000 members in Surrey and West Sussex. Now, you've got a big event coming up very shortly, haven't you? We have. It's, um, it's the uh, Business Awards. Um, that's, uh, gonna, the finals are going to be in uh, November. It's the second time we're running it. As, as the regional chairman, I wanted us to uh, run these awards because I think that they're valuable to small businesses. Um, last year was fantastic. We had 450 people as guests uh, to the awards evening. Um, I think we were mentioned on Sky News a couple of times. Twitter went into meltdown. It was a fantastic event. Um, and we got an awful lot of coverage for small businesses. And uh, this year we're, we're doing the same again. Um, so if you are a small business uh, based in Surrey, um, enter the awards. You can enter up to three categories for free. Uh, all the information is on the website surreyawards.co.uk and we encourage uh, any small business. You don't have to be an FSB member. So any business in Surrey can enter the awards. It's a fantastic way of getting profile for your business and I'd encourage uh, anybody to, to enter those awards. It says here three and a half thousand pounds in advertising for our media partner Surrey Life overall winners prizes. That's, that's is that prizes. up for grabs this year as well? Yeah, three and a half that, grand. Yeah, that's one of the one of the prizes to the overall winner uh, will be three and a half thousand pounds worth of advertising in Surrey Life, which, as you know, is a well respected and uh, and, and a well uh, 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 read magazine. So, if you want more details about the event, wh where do you need to go? And who do you need to talk to? Surreyawards.co.uk. All the details on the website. You can enter straight off the back of the website, uh, off you go. And it's sponsored by Mercedes-Benz World and also, uh, is that Surrey County Council as it well? It is. We're absolutely delighted that for the second year running, um, the, the, the Surrey County Council has chosen to be the main sponsor as well as a sponsor of a category. So uh, thank you to David Hodge and Peter Martin from Surrey County Council for, for doing that. It's very much appreciated. And this year we've got uh, Mercedes-Benz who are um, sponsoring it as well. So it is a prestigious set of awards to be winning I encourage you to enter. It's free. Why wouldn't you do it? So you can enter for free? Yep. You can enter three categories for free. Fantastic. All right. If you want more details, just simply go along uh, to the website FSB Surrey Business Awards 2015 if you're in this, obviously if you're within the uh, Surrey area. But if you're not within the Surrey area, somewhere else across the country, uh, don't forget your local FSB organisation. Uh, they're going to be doing events just like this one for you as well. So do check out. Is there mm -hmm. a, a UK wide FSB website? Have I there you? is. It's fsb.org.uk. And uh, if whatever part of the country you're in, you'll be able to log on to that and you'll be able to go to your particular region and see number one what's going on in your region um, so whether again you're a member or not you can go along to a variety of different events the FSB does for small businesses um, so that's why I encourage anybody up and down the country to look at their region and go along. Absolutely fantastic. You're watching Business Connections Live on today's show, How to Make Sales Work. My guest is Antonio Falco, a sales professional with years of expertise on how businesses can open the door to untapped sales. Now, we've already talked about maybe the the, the mental state that we're in, the, the way that we approach sales in this country, the, the, the persona that we have mm. of a salesperson, our, uh, the way we imagine them. Uh, we're going to look at the key skills that probably every salesperson should have. If you had to list them, what do you think the key sales are, Antonio? How long is the show, Steve? <laughs> no, um, uh, let me just start uh, off. Uh, uh, as we're speaking, I would say you need, uh, you need to be focused, you need to be targeted, uh, you need to have tenacity, um, and you need to have the ability to understand that, as I mentioned in the first segment, that while sales is a numbers game, and the better you become, the more the numbers go your way in terms of the ability to convert more, more customers and more business. There is the requirement to, to keep going, you know, um, and that's, I think, for anything in life. You, you know, if you, if, you, if you fall over, you've got to get up and, uh, and keep going. So tenacity, the ability to keep going and to be focused and targeted. Well, let's kick off with being focused, mm. uh, focused and targeted. That's what you said there. How do we get ourselves into a position where we're focused and targeted? Do you think it, do you think sometimes that businesses, when they go out to sell, are just so unprepared, they don't truly understand the proposition that they're, they're offering? Or is it a case that they don't understand what the customer's needs are? Both, you put it beautifully. Um, in the first section, uh, Steve, as you know, I said that one of the things that needs to happen is you need to understand what it is you are attempting to sell. So you need to understand your product or service because off the back of that, you then need to formulate, and I like 
number six don't ask me why just it's a good number I like to formulate six questions that I need the answer to in order to understand whether the person that I'm talking to is actually going to be a potential customer for me and what could those six questions be well um, is this the right person I'm talking to are they able to make the decision now do you know what? You, yes you hear that all the time mm. and this is what people say so how do you actually frame that question how do you actually ask somebody are you the right person bearing in mind that somebody that you're asking a question is has got their own credibility their own self-belief that they are the right person how do you frame that question I think you have to go well I'll answer, well, let me ask that question before I go into the come back a few steps <laughs> because it's all about doing your homework right it's all about understanding where you think your product or service is going to be taken up where it's going to so it's understanding the type of customer that you think and we call that a suspect by the way we suspect that they might be a type of customer and how do you build that list well you you do that based on a number of, of, of parameters that you think would suit your product or service and that could be very simply geography size of company the industry they're in etc off the back of that Steve that you then need to understand well what sort of person in that company would actually look to buy my product who would be responsible for buying that product could it be the owner could it be a, a an IT director could it be a finance director who is it that could actually that I actually need to, to speak to so when you're in front of somebody and you want to just qualify and by the way you should have done this on the phone anyway but if you just want to qualify if you're talking to the right person you can ask a very simple question that is non-offensive in my opinion and that is how does the decision process get taken in this company is it just yourself Steve is there a team that looks at uh, looks at potentially the sort of product that you're looking to engage with H how does the pr decision process work here that's a great question great way of asking it I tell you what that is it write that down if you if you learn nothing else from today's show that is a great piece of advice because you often read in all the sales manuals they say make certain you're talking to the right person mm. and I think there is a danger that you could end up sounding like that you're you're attacking the person that you're trying to make the sale from also the fact that they are suspects a lot of people think don't they the moment they're talking to anybody that they aren't just prospects but they are customers they call them mm. customers yep. and we, we seem to always be jumping the gun when we're going in as well don't we let me qualify what a customer is it's somebody who's given you money until they've given you money they're not a customer up until that point they are just a prospect so that's somebody that you think haven't done your homework could actually potentially buy your product or service and why could that be well because actually similar types of companies in a similar industry have done so you've tested it somewhere else you've actually built a, a, a suspect base of people you think you've talked to that suspect base some of them have decided to have a conversation with you and maybe somebody's bought from you now you have evidence that your product or service can be sold to that industry type or that type of business so now you're right you're now talking to a prospect they're only a customer when they've given you money when they've made a purchase so if people can just understand that I think it changes the approach dramatically now there is a bit of psychology behind that that says well actually if I'm going to in the back of my mind think that they're a customer then everything I do all my questions or my the way that they'll I be framed the, the right way exactly so there, there is there is that element you this is why sales is so complex this is why it is a science and not just a a, a brow beating stroke gift of the gab exercise you know it, it is it is a very in, intense uh, uh, role if you do it right in in that whole area then of using oh. linguistics and the way we frame a question how we say a question can we lead a prospect to be a customer by the linguistics that we use by the way we frame a question to them so we lead them down the garden path to the point or lead them to water and they eventually will drink and become a customer uh, Steve <laughs> you should be doing this interview yes absolutely that's exactly right that is exactly right and that um, and I'm sure a lot of people are watching this thinking well how on earth do you do that uh, first of all you have to apply yourself you have to learn the art of selling 
you have to, un you know, you, you, you start with, and I've come back to my, you start with six basic questions that you need the answer to in order to understand whether or not it's a customer. And then it builds from there. You get more intelligent. You get into things like directional questioning. What the heck is that? Well, it's the sort of thing you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, you get into uh, assumptive selling. You, you, you know, and there's, there's a whole variety of different techniques that you learn on the way. So first you start with a simple model. You start with understanding what the structure of the sales meeting is about. And there's two ways of explaining this, and if we've got a second, I'll, I'll do so. And from that, you just build your knowledge and your skill set based on a framework so that you get to the point where you can actually answer questions like this without doing any preparation. Right. The six questions that you would ask then, what are they off the top of your head very quickly? They well, are. They change for all sorts of people. One, uh, are we, am I talking to the right person? So. What's the process in, in this organisation for engagement? Um, what's the budget? Have you put a budget aside? Is there a budget? Is there likely to be a budget created? So budget. So who makes the decision? Is there money? What's the, and this is where you get, what is the problem that you currently have that you need solving? That in itself, Steve, is a whole trigger for a variety of different questions because you could ask that really bluntly. You could be a very naive person, ask it very bluntly, as I've done so. But when you get more sophisticated, you start to actually deconstruct that and you start to do exactly what you said a second ago, which is actually create a, a variety of different questions that seamlessly bring you to a point where the prospect is saying, well, actually, I'd like to buy your product. Right. Um, so that's three. Uh, the other questions you may, you may choose to ask, they're the three critical questions, by the way. Um, uh, a, a, a question surrounding, um, the future of, the, uh, of, of their business. It's, remember, selling is all about them, it's not about you. Your business is all about your customer, not about you. So what can this product do for them? Get them to start to understand and tell you what it can do for them. So am I talking to the right person? Is there a budget? What's it going to solve for you? What's the future what it can do for you? How do you see this developing, helping develop your business? Again, these are questions that get them to understand how they can use your product or service to better enhance their business. All right, then. so the, that's the, been focused and understanding what we're going to do with those questions. Um, what about when it comes to the tenacity of it all? I mean, you, you said they're focused. We know where we're going with it. What about Target. the ten uh -huh. targets? We'll come back and target. Second. Let's talk mm. about target. Okay. That's, that's better, yes. Well, it's interesting. Um, uh, if you are running a business, I don't care how small it is or big it is, you need to be saying to yourself, what is it that I'm going to try and do in terms of money? What am I going to actually try and turn over this year? What am I, how many orders am I going to try and get this year? You know, I had a meeting with a client, uh, funny enough, I know this is Monday, yesterday, on, on a Sunday, and, and they've been in business several years, well, 12 years now. And I said to them, so you're coming to the end of the financial year, what will you finish on? They gave me a figure. I said, what's the target next year? Well, we never set a target. I said, well, how is it you're going to target next year if you don't know what it is you're aiming to? So in sales, if you've got salespeople, they need a target. They need to understand what's expected from them. And it is as cold and as blunt as that, a financial target. And you really got to direct your sales team to actually to yep. be doing that. They, they really do need to understand it. Yep. Uh, what are we going to talk about next? So we, we've talked there about focus, we've talked about targets, targets are really important. We've talked too about the six questions that are imperative so that we know where our, our foundations are, our starting mm -hmm. point. We're going to be talking about tenacity. What else are we going to be looking at? What are the other key elements we're going to be talking about in the next segments? Enhancing your skill. How do I become better at doing what I'm doing? How do I become a better salesperson? What is it I need to learn? Do you know, it's probably one of the, the hardest skills in the whole world when it comes to sales. If you are in the sales profession, there are some people I think that are born salespeople. There are people that I know that just seem to know exactly how to go about selling. They, they seem to, the way they construct their sentences, we talked there briefly about the linguistics of the question. They seem to talk in a way that is going to be leading you to buy from them all the time. There are others, though, that need to learn it. And as uh, Antonio has already said, 
that sales process really fundamentally hasn't changed. The people perhaps who are taking part in it, the bit part players, they perhaps have changed and the environments that they come from have changed. But ultimately, when it comes to doing sales, the fundamentals are still exactly the same. Uh, as we said, we've talked about the focus, we've talked about making certain that we know about the targets. Uh, we're going to be talking about the tenacity in just a few moments time, because really, once you start into the sales process, you've absolutely got to get on with it and keep getting on with it as well. That's still to come right here on this edition of Business Connections Live. But we continue right now with a, a little bit of a hint from uh, our point of view on some of the things that we're going to be getting up to over the next uh, couple of months. In fact, coming up next month, we're very excited about this. We're going to be at the Business Networking Show. Uh, that's going to be at Wolverhampton Racecourse on Friday, the 18th of September. Now, look at this. This is great news for all the team that are involved. Stan Space sold out. It's been sold out for quite some time. This time last year, they were worrying. This time uh, this year, everything is rocking and rolling. It's going to be a fantastic event. If you are a small to medium scale enterprise, if you're a small business, if you're in the Wolverhampton area, in fact, if you're even, no matter where you are in the country, Wolverhampton, very central, very easy to get to, it's a good day out, come along to the Wolverhampton race course on Friday the 18th. Uh, you can get your tickets, you can book your all day ticket there, it's just £20. Uh, you can click straight away there. You can also go to our website as well. Now, some of the keynote speakers are going to be there. Got some good keynote speakers this year. Um, you see Neil Clough is sitting there. Let's just go down. The Media Zone, we're going to be broadcasting for the entire day from the event. We are really actually looking forward to getting up there. And the keynote speaker, let me see where the keynote, oh, look, here we go. The um, speaker and event programme. So let's see who we've got talking this year. Well, Ruben Singh, an old friend of ours from All Day PA, he is the keynote speaker. Ruben, by the way, has lost loads of weight just recently, and I saw some pictures that he tweeted of himself, and uh, he's looking in good shape. So Ruben is working up. He's working out to make sure that's going to be a fantastic keynote. Will King injected the secret of Esource. Uh, he created the King of Shades brand in 1993. Chris Ducker is going to be there, the business of you. Brad Burton, life business just got easier. Gary Turner from Zero, he's going to be there. How to get paid? Gary Turner's beginning uh, beginner's guide to kick ass credit control. Stefan Thomas, uh, the whole business of networking for dummies. He's the author of that book. Ian Dixon's, who's been on the program before in the past, uh, from the Beat in Brixton to main board in Dixon. Jason Dutton uh, from Four Networking. Terry Cooper also from Four Networking. Debbie Huxton has been on the show. He's going to be launching uh, Debbie TV in the next couple of weeks. Oh, blimey. Look, and Del Boy's down the bottom there, Steve Harlan, cutting through the noise. If you want to use video to market and to sell your business, um, I'm only going to give a short one, around about 10 minutes, but we're going to be live on the air all the way through the day. If you can't make it to the event, watch the live stream uh, on our website and also on the 4Networking website. I think it's going to be there too uh, for the uh, Business Networking Show 2015 Wolverhampton Race Course on Friday the 18th of September. It is truly well worth worth going along. You can book your tickets online. There's a, one of the largest bump tables in the UK. If you're into networking, this is the place to be doing some serious networking on the day. That is the Business Networking Show. Just very quickly, just before we go off where we're going to be over the next couple of months, uh, in December, we're also going to be here as well. Uh, this is the Business Show 2015 at Olympia. That's between the 3rd and the 4th, 2015. And uh, 170 interactive stands, UK's biggest exhibition for anyone starting or growing uh, the business. Some great keynote speakers. I'm not talking at this one. Oh, look, Charlie Mullins from Pim Go Plumbers, he may be there. Uh, we've got Brad, but or maybe not, as far as the case may be. Uh, also, um, took a bully man who you can see at the moment on Dragon Stand. I, I don't know, I'm going to be very interested to see him live actually. Mm. Um, I, f I find he, I find his, his act on Dragon Stand very interesting. Full of my drift. But moving smartly on, uh, we've also got keynote Dan Spicer, who's been with us on the show as well. And uh, he is from... Who's <laughs> people going, move on. Thank you very much, Steve. Moving on. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, that's the Business Show 2015, 3rd and 4th of December 2015 at Olympia. And we're going to be broadcasting uh, from there as well. 
You're watching Business Connections Live on today's show, How to Make Sales Work with Antonio Falco, a sales professional with years of expertise on how businesses can open the door to untapped sales. Okay then, Antonio, we've talked about the focus, we've talked about the, uh, the targets. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the tenacity then. What's that all about? I think you have to have the resilience to keep going. You know, Steve, nothing easy in life is, uh, is, is free, nothing easy uh, or worthwhile in life is easy to get to. Uh, you know that, you're running a business and you have to keep going. Yes, you can change your, your tack and you can change maybe some of the uh, ideas you have and how you promote the business, but fundamentally, when it comes to sales, you have to have tenacity to keep going. You have to understand that, as you said at uh, an earlier section, that uh, you're going to get some knockbacks. Uh, and as I said, that's okay because you're only after one or two answers, yes or no, ultimately, uh, and either of those have equal value. So it's the ability to keep picking yourself up and going because you never know what's around the, around the corner. You know, you never know that you might come into a very nice purple patch where every single person you speak to wants to buy your product, and sometimes it goes that way. But it only goes that way if you keep focused, you keep working, and, and you're tenacious about uh, about doing it. It's the danger with UK businesses and businesses in general that it's, we've often heard the expression, no pay, no pay, no pay, no pay. And just before they, they break that cycle, just before things are starting to look up, they've done all the hard work, mm. but that's when they give up. They give up at that part of the cycle. And if they, they were to keep going just a little bit longer, they would turn that circle into the purple patch. But a lot of businesses seem to give up because they think, I've tried everything, it's just not working. Well, I, I think, Steve, that there's, uh, uh, there's a few things to say about that. One is, in that process where nothing is happening, you need to analyse why nothing's happening. It, is it my approach? Is it my inability to understand uh, how, to, how to elicit whether or not I'm talking to a potential customer? Have I, have I got the skills to do that? Do I need some help with that? Um, is it that my product or service actually has no room, there is no market for it, it's just in my own mind it's got a market? So you have to really try and understand that as well whilst you're going through that, that process. So this isn't just about keep going, keep going, keep going and, and something will happen. There is an element of that. But you have to just ensure that what you're trying to offer genuinely has uh, some, a potential marketplace. When we are trying to offer something to our customer, do, mm. do we sometimes get the technique wrong? Do we, you do hear a lot of times, and you see this on some of the shopping channels, in fact, where people are try, trying to sell features, they're not trying to sell benefits, or is this whole features and benefits thing, is that just, just a whole area where people get completely confused? I think that's absolutely right, and you, you've moved me uh, very... Uh, swiftly onto and uh, elegantly onto my favourite topic because this whole features and benefits thing, I think there's a massive amount of confusion. And this comes to what I was saying earlier on about the ability to actually get better at your job. You know, in order to, to understand and get to grips with selling, you really have to understand the intricacies of it. And a lot of people do not understand the difference between features and benefits, or they think they're selling benefits. The reality is, Steve, I've said on this show before, that the vast majority, and I'm talking business to business sales, not business to consumer sales. If business, if you business to business selling, people think that they have a bunch of benefits that somebody's going to like, and so as I put in my new book, stop pitching and start selling. What they do is they hope to say enough of the right things that somebody might go, "Oh, that sounds interesting. I'd buy your product." That isn't selling. That's just what I call verb verbally regurgitating whatever you can remember onto somebody in the hope that something might stick. That's not selling. So that's this pitching phenomenon we've, that's happened over the past couple of years, which really demonstrates why you need to understand selling. And so this features and benefits uh, uh, scenario, you know, the reality is that all you actually have is a bunch of features that might actually be of benefit to somebody. Your job is to understand which of your features actually are of benefit to that potential customer. And they could be different from, to, to, uh, from customer to customer, or potential customer to potential customer. So this comes down to understanding your product or service, understanding what you need to ask in order to elicit whether or not you're talking to a potential customer. And so there is an enormous amount of intelligence behind the ability to sell. And I, and I, I, I'm going to disagree on one thing you said earlier on. 
I don't think that there are, is such a thing as born salespeople, just as there isn't such a thing as born brain surgeons. You know, uh, the, everything has to be learnt. There might be a, um, a, a bent towards it, there might be a, a, um, a, a characterization towards being a salesperson, but that person still needs to learn the art of it. They still need to learn the mechanics. They still need to learn uh, the engineering that goes behind selling. And features and benefits is one of those wonderful things that demonstrates exactly whether or not you know your stuff or not. We so is that the inexperienced salesperson then that is, that is sprout, sprouting off and just giving features, giving benefits, and not really understanding the impact that they have on their potential customer, on their prospect? Exactly that. Exactly that. Because what are you trying to do? As I said earlier on, you are trying to actually find out what the problem is. By asking questions, you are attempting to find out what exactly is the problem that this potential customer has got. And then you're going to pick out of your features the thing that will fix that problem. And that gets turned into a benefit because it's a benefit to them. It's the old saying, Steve, one man's meat and another man's poison. It's no different in selling. One man's feature or one company's feature is somebody else's benefit and vice versa. So this is what I'm talking about, the art of selling, the skill of selling, understanding what you're doing. You have to understand that you have no benefits. All you've got is a bunch of features. Your skill is to understand which of your features is going to suit that particular customer. Well, there we go. There's the clarity that perhaps you possibly need there when it comes to features and benefits and what you should be doing with those tools that you have when you've got them in the palm of your hands. How best do you present those to your prospect who hopefully will turn into a customer? And it's not just that the buckshot effect it is actually by understanding the needs of the customer so that you can actually tell them what the benefits will be because you understand their needs. Exactly right. where, where do we go after that then? Because, I mean, that's really interesting. What, what's the next stage, the next part of the process? Well, uh, the, 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 one of the final part, ask for the order. Exactly what you said earlier on. You know, so what, people we, we are go frightened to, of doing that, aren't people they? People are frightened of doing that. And there's two ways that you can handle this. And, and, and with experience, knowledge and ability, uh, you start to change the way that you get to the point where you, you make that final exchange. And yes, there is the old saying, always be closing. As you become better at the art of selling... ABC. The, yeah, as you become better at the art of selling and you start to intimately understand the engineering, the mechanics behind selling and what exactly you're doing and all the stuff you mentioned before about questioning and all that kind of stuff, you, you can do that from the very, very beginning, from the word off. But for most inexperienced people, they have to understand that there's a bit of a process. And yes, don't get sophisticated about it. Ask questions. Show them that you understand the problem. Here's my solution. Then ask for the order. When, when you're out and you're doing training and you're talking to people about doing this, do you see people going, is this very much a case of you say this is how it should be done, people go, yep, that's how it should be done, but there's something, that there is a, a real issue, a personality issue, that it is very difficult to do that. When you're in looking in the whites of your customer's eye, mm -hmm. to ask for the order sometimes, some people will find very difficult. Is that because they haven't prepped enough, because they haven't prepared enough, they haven't understood the, uh, the benefits to them, uh, to their client enough? Is it because they're unprepared that they don't feel confident enough to ask for the order? Well, there's, there's the word, confidence. Being prepared gives you confidence. So it's the confidence that knowing that you've done the right job. It's, and, you know, as other sales professionals watching this will understand, and actually when you go through that very basic process, which actually is a very complicated process, but when you go through that basic structure, what you're really doing is you're getting the customer to engage with you, or the potential customer, to engage prospect. with you, prospect, <laughs> um, to engage with you during that discussion process. And that part of that engagement is them saying to you, yeah, that makes sense. No, that doesn't make sense. Well, that gives you a clue that you need to find out something else. That gives you a clue that you need to use a different tack. And that, you know, is something that's brought over through experience and ability. And ability is a big thing. Um, because there's a lot of experienced salespeople out there that, frankly, in my opinion, have got, might have 25 years' experience, but they, in reality, they've got one year's experience 25 times over. And so it is ability that counts, um, and having done it a, a number of times. So it, it is about bringing that potential prospect with you through that conversation. You know, and, and the, the old thing of listening twice as much as you talk 
is, is, is a foundation of all I was going to ask you, we were given two ears and one mouth, we should use them in that ratio. Do you think we listen enough in the sales environment as a salesperson? Look, when I see uh, a number of my clients, uh, small businesses, and their job is to run the business, deliver the product, manage a team of people, and actually be the salesperson as well, that skill of selling is lacking. And so what happens is they walk in and they verbally regurgitate everything about themselves and their business without, and, and they do this pitching, so frustrating. <laughs> they do this pitching. God, you're like a dog with a bone with it. the pitching, don't you? I hate it because actually what it does is it denigrates the profession of selling because pitching is not selling. And they pitch and, and that's what they think selling is about. And then they hang their hopes on the fact that they've said enough of the right things that somebody's going to go, that sounds fantastic, great. So, yes, it's confidence, it's being prepared, it's understanding your business, it's knowing what to ask. And then at the end of the day, it's saying, can we please have your business? Because this Briefly, with the pitching, do you think that is because of programmes like The Apprentice and things like that, that we've now got into this psyche, very briefly, mm. is, is that because of the, the likes of The Apprentice, do you feel? It doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't. It, that was brief. How, how much briefer can it be? Uh, it just goes to show you, though, doesn't it? So are you a salesperson that goes out there and are you pitching or are you selling? If you're pitching and maybe you're not having the success that you feel that you could have, I think you can pitch for things like mops and steamers and things like that mm -hmm. for a product that is very, very, you know, quite tangible, quite demonstrable. But... If you're selling a service, can you pi uh, pitch a service in the same way? And, and Antonio feels that you can't. The, the definition, perhaps, maybe of pitch and selling can get a little bit muzzy at times, I suppose. Listen, we've got more to talk about on this edition of Business Connections Live, and that's coming along in just a few moments' time. But right now, though, what we're going to do, we're going to um, give you an opportunity to, to just ask yourself this question. I don't know whether this is a pitch <laughs> or a sell, quite frankly. And it's, it's I think this is, this is more of a pitch, what I'm going to do right now, as opposed to a sell. Um, if you're finding the program absolutely fascinating, and it is all about sales today with Antonio, and he's a fantastic guest today. Uh, but wouldn't you like to have something like this for yourself? I mean, what do people do when they go to your website? When you send out your newsletters to them, do you engage the people you're talking to? Or is it just another email that comes through? Or is it just another website that they go to? And it's, I mean, there is an old expression about click something else. Do they just switch off instantly? Do people want to go to your website to find out the information? Do they feel they know you when they go to the website? Well, we here at Business Connections Live, we do this program, we do it every week, and we bring personalities alive. You could go to Antonio's website. Yes, you'll get the written word, and you'll see his comments, and you'll get his feelings, and you'll understand what Antonio is all about. But watching Antonio for just a few seconds on a program like this, well, as they say, a picture paints a thousand words. Antonio's been on now for nearly 30-odd minutes or so. So how many words have we represented in that 30 minutes? You can have a program just like this one for your website. We call it Your Brand TV. And you can do all sorts of things with it. You can use it as a newsletter. You can use it as an introduction to your website. You can do all of that and so much more. You need to talk to us about it. To give you a little bit more of an insight into it, have a look at this. Still sending out conventional newsletters to customers? Do you just want a more engaging way to talk to your customers and employees? Hello, I'm Steve Hyland. And I'm Linda Bazant of Business Connections Live. Your Brand TV is a completely branded television show that can be streamed live or delivered on demand to your niche audience. Be the first in your market to capitalize on the online media gold rush that is using online video to effectively deliver news, information and education to key personnel and clients. Video attracts two to three times as many monthly visitors. It doubles their time spent on your site and has a 150% increase in organic traffic from search engines. Large networking organizations are already utilizing the power of Your Brand TV to market, promote and publicize to their members and groups across the UK. 
Your program will be branded with your corporate colours and logos in your own broadcast quality network studio. You can choose the format. It can be news or magazine or interview in its look and feel. You can have live guests on your show or you can Skype them in. You can stream the show live or on demand so it's available for catch up. This is a chance to deliver your message in a new exciting format that will allow your business to cut through the noise and stand out from the crowd and engage your workforce and customers. This is Your Brand TV. To get more information on this fabulous opportunity to bring to life your corporate communications, contact us today at Business Connections Live, the UK's leading online business channel. Well, there you go. If you'd like to find out more details about Your Brand TV, you can have a word with either myself or Linda Bazan. We'll tell you more about how it could work for you and also how easy it is. Also, uh, there's quite a few businesses at the moment that are looking at actually doing their own programmes uh, that they can either stick up on satellite. We can advise you on that too. So if you want more details, OK, let's go through the details right now. You can email us, of course, at studio at businessconnectionslive.com. Uh, as always, you can telephone us directly. We don't mind talking to you. Here's the telephone number 01784 256 777 and there's always good advice going out from us here as well at Business Connections Live if you follow us on Twitter too at BCL Business TV we've got a Facebook page we'll give you details about that you probably see that on my little bit that comes up here occasionally but do follow us on Facebook and we are looking for likes as well there's all the information that you need if you want to get more information for your own program here at Business Connections Live you are watching Business Connections Live. It's great to have your company as always on today's show, How to Make Sales Work. We're talking to Antonio Falco, a sales professional with years of expertise on how businesses can open the door to untapped sales. We've been through quite a lot. Actually, we were talking about the sales or the pitch. I'm fascinated by the whole area of pitching and sales and maybe how that process takes place. Uh, before we talk a little bit more to Antonio, let's just look at your website because you give out oodles of free information mm -hmm. on your website. It's a really good site too. If you go along, um, the web address is? It's www.antoniofalco.com. Uh, simply go there. Now, we're looking at the blog here at the moment and there's some, uh, and okay, it's, it's quite basic, but what I like about it is it gets to the point very, very quickly. So take heart, six of the best, good advice there. The accidental salesman on respecting elders, consistency and persistence. You know, FSB Small Business Expert National Conference 2015. There's a lot of great information. If you are a professional salesperson, if you are in sales and you just need someone that you feel is going to give you that bit of support, that little bit of advice, then Antonio's website is a great place to go. Also, uh, you can follow him on Twitter as well. Your Twitter handle is Antonio Falco, capital A, capital F. It's as simple and as straightforward as that. Let's talk a little bit more about the pitch and a little bit more about the sales. It's what your book is all about that's coming out very shortly and we will give information in the future about that. The pitch and the sales. Let's, for those people that are just joining us right now, let's just define the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. The difference between a pitch selling and sales selling, professional selling. Okay. What are they? Uh, well, my uh, interpretation of those, Steve, are uh, whenever I whenever I see somebody pitching, it is what I said earlier on. It's regurgitating as much of the, of the features of your product or, business or service that you have to offer in the hope that some of it will stick and, and your potential customer, your prospect, will say, "I like the sound of that," and may ask you more questions about it. And then you, so it, it is. It's the it's this regurgitation of everything you can think of, with hope attached to the, off the back of it. Whereas selling is, is a controlled um, process. It's, uh, it's, a, it's an intelligent process. Because what is it you're actually doing? What is it you're actually selling at the end of the day? In my, in my belief, Steve, I think what you're selling is uh, confidence. You're selling the fact that your product or service will actually do what you say it's going to do. Because up until a customer actually buys your product and, or service and uses it, they really don't know. I know all the case studies and testimonies in the world just offer some comfort, 
but they really don't know till they start using you or your product or your service. So what you're actually selling is confidence. But I don't think you build confidence up without understanding what their problem is, without demonstrating you have a solution, without digging deep and understanding exactly how is your product or service going to fix their problem? What is it exactly going to do for you? And so in this whole process of, of structured selling, and which to a lot of sales professionals doesn't look like it's structured, a bit like any sport, you know, as we discussed earlier on, it doesn't look like there's much effort going in. That's, that's the top tier of, of selling. You know, you have to dig deep into understanding what is that you're going to solve for that particular client. Do you think the mistake is sometimes made when people are pitching and selling, when they are pitching, that they feel that demonstrating is selling? I, I think that, uh, let me clarify pitching and, pre and presenting then, because I think that's what, where you might be going. I think there's a, there's a difference between pitching and presenting. When you are presenting something, and in that sales meeting where part of that cycle is your opportunity to actually taken what you've heard, reincorporated into what you do, and then coming back with a solution, having understood what the problem is, that's, that's when you're presenting a solution. And so there are opportunities where you have to do a presentation from what appears to be cold and might be interpreted as pitching, but actually the clever presenter has done some homework beforehand. And so they're presenting based with some knowledge. Pitching is presenting with no knowledge. It is that hope of, if I say enough of the right things, they're going to like what I have to say. So presenting means you've done some homework. Selling means you've understood the problem. Pitching is just hoping. I think uh, we can pretty much say that he's not a big fan of pitching. If you are one of those salesmen uh, that are pitching at the moment, perhaps maybe you should be uh, maybe looking at your technique and your, your skills, your skill set that you have at the moment. Uh, a lot of people seem to go wrong. That we're, we've gone through the process. We've done our professional sales. Mm. We've worked our way through our sales. We're, we've asked for the order at the end. You do find that a lot of salespeople at that point seem to wash their hands of the, the prospect. The moment that the prospect becomes a customer, they seem to wash their hands and they feel that now everything is running fine, no real need to work with that customer again. Well, not as hard as they have done up until that point. Mm. Is so that... you're talking about the one-off sale where there's nothing coming after it. Thanks for the order. I'm hightailing it out of here. I've got thank the money. You thank you very much. I'm out of here. Well, you know, they don't see the value in that customer, an ongoing customer. Well, I think it, 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 this comes down to the, the, the company and the philosophy and the way that you structure your sales team. I think as a matter of personal pride, as a matter of, I remember in my past career in, in companies, yes, my job was actually done when the order was placed. But out of personal pride, professionalism, care, due and attention, whatever label you want to put on it, Steve, I, I always wanted to make sure that when, when the product or service was delivered, when they, when they were working with it or up and running, I always used to put a call in to say, hi, Steve, it's Antonio, I know you're dealing with the technical guys now. I just wanted to ring in and make sure that you were happy. And what I said was going to happen is happening. What I said you were going to buy is what you what you bought, but that's that's just professional pride. There, um, you know, there are it, there are a lot of companies that once the salesperson's done their job, it moves on to a different set of people. It moves on to an account manager, or the technical team, or whoever it is that's delivering the product or service. But for small companies, what would be your suggestion to them if there, if it's a small follow up? And what yeah. and and how should you how often should you be talking to uh, a new customer? Is it something that you talk a lot to them? They, they do you follow up a lot after they've got the initial product? Um, is is it very much down to the product? That you were selling or the service you were selling or is that that whole art of communication is it still very important in the post sales environment uh, it's it, for me it's, it's critical and I always suggest that people do if you're running a small business you do follow up after that sale has been made because what is it you want you are actually after a recommendation isn't it great to get a, a testimonial and a case study from all your customers and ask, said, for, uh, ask for a recommendation. Yeah. Uh, indeed. I mean, a lot of people don't do that, do they? Do you know, uh, the, the smart business person, the smart salesperson, what do they ask for? After the, after the deal is done, they go back and go, 
Now what I'd like, my, my subsequent targets, unbeknownst to you, the customer, is I'd love a case study or a testimonial and some introductions, some referrals. It's interesting because after every one of our programmes, we always ask for all our guests to, to give a testimonial for the programme. And we always ask for that. And the reason we do that is because people will... Well, not by necessarily, but that's what they're looking for. That testimonial gives them a feeling of comfort to mm -hmm. a certain extent, doesn't it? And value. The fact that there's, they're worth something, they, they, you know, and, and because what are you trying to do with the business? You're trying to build a long-term reputation. You know, um, to run a business successfully takes years. There's no overnight success, not, not really. I mean, who'd heard of Microsoft in the first 10 years of their life or IBM or any of those big companies? Nobody's really heard of them. You know, it takes years to actually establish yourself. And to make that establishment stick, to make your reputation stick, I think you have to do a lot of follow-up. I think you have to do a lot of customer care afterwards. Do you know, we've touched very briefly on it there, and, and maybe what we'll do is that over the next few minutes, what we'll do, uh, we'll, we'll just talk a little bit, we may have to split this in half, getting customers, because that must be one of the biggest problems and um, we're, we're talking about recommendations there. Mm -hmm. Is there a process for finding prospects? We've talked about the prospect that we've already got. How do you find them? At the very beginning of the program we talked about yellow pages. People don't seem to use yellow pages anymore. What is the, the, the route to prospect for new clients? Uh, well we're lucky now because now there's a variety of different routes. Uh, you've now got uh, online networking so you've got the likes of LinkedIn, you've got other social media, Facebook, um, where people can find out about you and try and engage with you and you can engage with a, 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 a admittedly it's one removed from a, from a, from a face or, or telephone conversation but it's an engagement process. You've got other elements of social media that allow you to start to engage with potential customers. You've got networking events where you can actually face to face meet and talk to people and you can hopefully find an opportunity there and how do you do that well you ask questions it's all about them it's not about you you know the network bore is all the is the one that talks about themselves instead of talks about you so cocktail eyes yeah okay, there you go you're not very interesting <laughs> who's over there who can i talk to over there isn't it yes so so there's that there's always room in my opinion for direct cold you've never heard of me i've never heard of you but i think you could be a potential customer of mine that suspect of engaging of attempting to engage with, with clients direct from cold. You You're talking about cold calling, aren't you? And it's, I can, I can well, how many feel times? it right now. There are people watching this and there is a shiver going down their back as we're talking about it. Well, you know, Steve, you know, you go to a networking event and you end up talking to three or four people and a couple of them, are, you think to yourself, gosh, that could be a potential customer. What happens then? Most people do nothing with it. Well, what has to happen? You go back to your desk and you give them a call. Okay. It might be slightly warm because you can very quickly in the first sentence say, hi, I met you at XYZ networking event, but you still then have to give them a reason why they need to sit down and talk to you. So, and, and how many times have you seen Dragon's Den? You mentioned Dragon's Den earlier on. How many times have you seen Dragon's Den where one of the dragons has said, so how many people have you actually called? Uh, no one. So you want me to make the call for you? And come, that's why they're there, the isn't it? Because they're trying to make the call. Listen, we're going to talk more about uh, social media, how it works, how to maximise networking. You've got a lot to get through still, and maybe just a little bit about cold calling as well on this edition of Business Connections Live. That's all to come uh, in uh, the, the next 12 minutes or so right here on the program. We hope you're enjoying the program. Don't forget, uh, you can always contact us by simply going to our, uh, our email address. You can send us an email if you are or you have questions about the program, then studio at Business Connections Live. More from Antonio Falco in just a few moments' time. Uh, just a quick reminder, though, right now here on the program about some of our future guests. They're going to be including the likes of Steve Mills, the prudent marketeer, Brad Burton and Gary Turner. We talked about Gary Turner earlier on from Zero. Uh, he's going to be on the program with Brad uh, in a couple of weeks. We're going to be talking about the business networking show as well. And uh, the welcome return of Steve Nichols as well, talking about all things tech. 
Also, would you like to sponsor the program? Are you enjoying the show today? Uh, you can sponsor the show if you want. Uh, the show, incidentally, is going to be shown on a local television. If you go to Freeview Channel 8 in the Cambridge area and also on the local Virgin service in the Cambridge area, you can watch the program there as well. A great opportunity, and we're hoping to expand that service uh, right across the UK over the coming months. So a real opportunity. If you'd like to sponsor the show, then please do get in touch with us. Uh, once again, you can email us at studio at businessconnectionslive.com you can always have a chat with us on the dog and bone uh, we'll do it old style 01784 256 777 and don't forget you can always follow us too on our twitter feed which is at bcl business tv that's all the ways you can get in touch with it looking forward to the programs in fact so if you'd like to be a guest as well on the show, do get in touch with us by those different means. OK, uh, let's uh, move smartly on. We're into our last segment of the programme. You are watching Business Connections Live. Uh, my guest on today's show is Antonio Falco. Uh, we're talking about how to make sales work. Uh, Antonio, professional with years of expertise on how businesses can open the door to untap sales. We've talked about the processes. We've just been talking there a little bit about how to cold call or how to get new prospects. Uh, cold calling, just really just got to get on and do it, haven't you? You know, Steve, I remember talking to a, um, a bank manager uh, quite a few years ago, and he said, you know, I've just been seeing one of my customers, and he's complained to me about the fact that uh, there's no business coming through the door. And he said to him, well, what's that on your desk? Pick the thing up and ring somebody. What was on now, his desk then? Telephone. <laughs> just, just checking. <laughs> but I was going to be there. Yeah. Telephone. Look, I, I, it's interesting you mentioned Cambridge. I've got clients uh, in, in Cambridge. I deal with an awful lot of technology companies. You said something very early on, which I, I'm going to humbly disagree with, which is, uh, you know, if you've got uh, a, a, an object, you know, you can pitch for an object. On, on, a, on a business consumer, I, I agree with you, but you know what? If you've got a piece of technology that's uh, £300,000, you can't pitch for that. You've got to understand what that piece of technology is actually going to solve for that client, and that does require a professional sales approach. So, um, you know, it, it's in, in the technology uh, field, you really have to get to grips with this whole cycle of understanding what your piece of technology can actually um, uh, fix for a client. I mean, I deal with a number of, uh, of IT services companies. You know, all very, very similar. They're looking for clients that, uh, in order to manage their IT facilities on their behalf as a third party. There's lots of these companies around. I'm sure some, a lot of the viewers uh, have got uh, are, are an IT services company. You know, why on earth would it be that a customer would now want to use your IT services company as opposed to somebody else? There's only, uh, you know, one reason they'd want to do it is because you found a really good reason for them to do so. And why have you done that? Because you've understood what their problem is. You've understood what their business is about. You've demonstrated that you have a clear understanding of the issues that they come across and that your business is set up to help them. I suppose what you're saying is that a lot of people who are in business that are already getting a service from somebody else are just OK about it. And there's always an opportunity to go in there with something that is a bit better than OK. Exactly that. But even if it is better than OK, Steve, you've still got to do the work that says... How am I going to determine whether or not my product or service is going to actually, they're going to buy my product or service? How am I going to determine that there's going to be the right fit? And you've got to do that by understanding the art of selling. Well, um, so coming back to cold calling, Steve, I, I, I'm just a fan of the fact that the only thing you ever have any control over is the amount of people you speak to. Networking, social media, and I've got a chapter in it in my, in my new book, Social Media. It's all fantastic, but don't use it as a crutch to avoid doing the hard no stuff, which is talking to people. You know, a lot of businesses do get business through social media. What they really get is they get the opportunity to have that, to make a pitch. That's what they really get. You know, but you still have to understand the art of selling. But fundamentally, the social media opens up avenues to touch and uh, other potential customers with your product or service, but it still comes down to the fact that you have to engage in discussion to understand how you can fix their problem if they've got one. And that's the key. So social media is great. Don't use it as a crutch. Don't wait for it to come in. You can be waiting an awful long time for the phone to ring. 
make the phone ring by picking it up and dialing something. Listen, I hope you found today a useful exercise. Going to be asking Antonio in just a moment uh, to give us his thoughts, a download in in three minutes about the whole world of sales, not the pitch, but the sell. Uh, before we do that, though, uh, the new book is coming out. You've been alluding to it <laughs> all the way through the show. We hate that. Uh, so tell us, tell us about the book. Uh, so many people keep asking me to write a book, so I'm just writing the very first one, uh, which is called Stop Pitching and Start Selling. It's a very small introductory book into selling. Uh, it really sets uh, the mindset in terms of you know, what is it that I should be, kind of things we've been discussing today. What, are the, what should I be thinking about and focusing on? And does it take you through the entire process from uh, Partly, looking for prospects, or is it is it from prospect to uh, uh, to selling? And the, and the techniques in selling, is it, is it all it of does, that? It does a little bit of that. It sets the scene. It gets people into the mindset that actually me going out and regurgitating all the wonderful things about my business isn't actually the way to do it. So it sets, it's, a very, it's, a very introdu it's an introductory book, Steve, that just sets out the mindset about how you need to change from doing that to actually get into grips with selling your product or service, not just pitching it. And that book's going to be available the latter part of 2015? Uh, yes, well, I'm hoping to launch it. Um, my target uh, is to launch it at uh, the uh, We Mean Business in Working on the 7th of October. I'm, I'm one of the speakers there. Uh, I think you're going to be there as well. So that's when I'm hoping to, uh, uh, to, to, to launch it. That's the target date. All right, then, that's fantastic. Now, as always, we invite our guests to, to look straight down the camera lens and to give us a bit of an insight, the real takeaways from this particular show. To hope you enjoyed it. I mean, sales is a, a tricky a tricky path to, to sale. You know what I mean? Uh, but it is, it is a difficult area. If you are in sales, you'll know that. There are some people who are very blasé about it. They go out there and it's something they do naturally. Um, Antonio has disagreed with me, I think, three times on today's <laughs> show. I do think that some people, it, it comes from nature, not nurture. Uh, there are people that I have known who just naturally go down the route of being naturally salesy in the way that their, their linguistic qualities are. Obviously, you know, from cold, they're not going to be great salespeople, but with a little bit of training, they become great salespeople. And there are some people who have no skill at all, but with the right training, also become great salespeople. So I think there are, you know, everybody can do it. It just needs to be a little bit, a little bit of bravery, a little bit of courage to go out there, maybe to pick up the phone, make that cold call, and to understand the process that you are going through as a salesperson, as a sales professional. Listen, I'm not going to steal your thunder. The airwaves of yours, straight down uh, camera number one, say who you are, where you're from, and uh, the takeaways that we should get from today's programme. Antonio. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for listening and watching today. Uh, just a couple of key things to take away with you. One, set yourself a target. Understand what it is you're aiming towards. Without that, you're going to be having a scattergun approach. Two, understand what you're selling. Now, you see, you think you know what you're selling, but actually sit down and think about it and write down six questions that you think you need the answer to before you can understand whether you're talking to a prospective customer or not. Six questions. It takes some thought. Sit down and do it. Third, when you're in front of a potential customer, understand what their problem is. Selling is about them, not about you. And the fourth thing, ask for the order. Because when you ask for the order, it very quickly clarifies whether or not you've done the job right, whether or not you've understood their problem, and whether or not you're really talking to a potential customer. Because strange things happen when you ask for money, and that's what you're doing when you ask for an order. Do that, read some sales books, read mine, and just get to grips with the art of selling. And it really is as straightforward and as simple as that when it if comes to selling, if you want to. <laughs> um, just before you do yeah. go, I mean, we talked a little bit about, about networking. And, and just very briefly, we've got a few minutes left at the moment. Do, do you think people get networking very wrong when they're out there? Uh, yes, and I think that the reason they get, get it wrong is because um, nobody's shown them how to do it. Uh, I think there's some basic rules about networking. Uh, one is set yourself a target for how many people you want to talk to. Um, 
Two, make sure that when you come away from networking, you follow those people up, even if it's just an email saying, hi, it's great to meet you. And, and a lot of people don't, do they? Do that. They'll go to the networking event, they'll have a glass of wine, they'll stand and talk for hours. To the same person. To the same person, and then do nothing, though, with the contacts. Absolutely right. I mean, for instance, when you go to a networking event, do you say, right, I will make three key contacts or four key contacts that I will follow up and make an, make an appointment with? That's exactly what I do. Exactly what I do. Because you know what, what give yourself what, an objective. Absolutely right. Without setting yourself an, an objective, a target, what is it you're actually doing there? You know, we want to make sure that we're not selling at networking. Absolutely right. The only thing you're trying to do there is to meet people, maybe get some advice. Networking is a great place to get some advice, but also to meet a potential customer. And you do that by asking questions. What is it you do, Steve? How's business? What are you hoping to do next year? What's your, uh, uh, what, how, do, how do people like your product? What, how do you go about selling it? Ask questions that are relevant to those people, and then yes, come away and follow up. And so, is there a time restraint, do you think, that, that because there's, there's nothing worse than the person standing in the corner who is not engaging with the room, mm. and, the, and you do find yourself gravitating towards them, and then all of a sudden you are in a deep conversation. You've got to remember that this isn't about going out for a chat, is it? No. What's the phrase out of uh, Jerry Maguire? This is not show, uh, show friends, this is show business. That's, the, <laughs> that's what the, you, you, you are there, and everybody's there, quite honestly, and what's wrong with it anyway? These groups are set up for, so that potential people can meet potential customers. And so that's, that's what you're there to do. And so there's nothing wrong with moving around, working the room, moving around the room, and you do that by setting yourself an objective, by finding out what people, uh, why people are there, by finding out about them, and then following up afterwards. And so, yes, you do sometimes get caught in, in, in the corner with somebody, and you have to politely say, it's been lovely to speak to you, I'm just gonna go meet some other people, we'll catch up soon, thank you. And do you think there are different expectations of what you can actually get out of networking, in as much as, do not be expecting that you're gonna get a sell out of the evening, or, or whatever, you may get an appointment, but really, you may get a recommendation, and that is just as important. Uh, just as vital, absolutely right. And again, this is about setting your expectations for, for, for that evening. And you know what, there's also nothing wrong with actually going along to an event and saying, you know what, today I'm actually going to help as many people as I can. So I'm going to actually ask people if they've got a question, I'm going to answer it for you. So become a font of knowledge. That's also a great way of actually developing your brand. Somebody that's actually a font of knowledge that helps people out. And you know what, from that, something will flow as a result of that. So there's lots of different things you can set yourself as an objective when you go to a, a networking event. But the key is work the room set an objective, follow up when you get back. Well, there we go. You've got two shows in one day. You've found out how to go about doing the sales, and you've also had the opportunity to find out how to maybe maximise your return on your time when it comes to going to a networking event. Listen, I hope you found today's programme of help when it comes to maybe increasing your sales for your own personal business. It doesn't matter who you are for that matter. If you're a small to medium-scale enterprise, an SME, if you're an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, it doesn't matter. You know, these techniques, these things are fundamental to the success of your business. Listen, Antonio, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the programme today. Thank you, Thank you very much Thank indeed you. for joining us. It's been fantastic and a real insight into the whole world of sales. We do hope you've enjoyed today's programme. It's been absolutely fabulous. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Now, don't forget, coming up in the next couple of weeks, we've got some great guests lined up for us. Uh, the program includes, well, we've got uh, Steve Mills, the prudent marketeer. He's going to be joining us in the future. Uh, Brad Burton and Gary Turner, he's going to be with us of Zero, talking about TBNS in the future as well. And also Steve Nichols talking about, uh, that's all to come on future editions of Business Connectors Live. Till we do it all again next week, live on a Monday. Till then, have a great week. Bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>